Now, this illustration deals with a, a temporary pole in accordance with Article uh, 590. But notice, uh, in setting that pole, there's a certain distance that you dig down. And most cities want about three foot. The utility wants the bracing to be on the side that the service drop comes in from the pole so that the pulling uh, of the drop with wind, maybe ice and even snow before the job is completed, you, they, you'll have that brace to keep that pole from pulling over and having that service drop on the ground and the service equipment. Now notice in Article 590, I believe it's 590.3, I believe, Service equipment has to be installed exactly in accordance with 230, Article 230. But the rest of the wiring or the construction period can be less than what the code would require. Now, notice you have a service panel there, uh, 590.4a. The meter is 590.2b5. Uh, notice that you have a 6-inch requirement there for the weather head and usually the local code requires the weather head to be six inches above the drop connection and usually uh, utilities will require the same thing uh, or they give you grace and uh, uh, they do not require it. And then notice the temporary pole has to meet 590.3a along with the service uh, panel 490.4a which we previously mentioned. And notice these braces here uh, is a, usually a city, state, or county uh, requirement along with the utility guidelines now. And notice that brace is a two by four inch, uh, uh, a two by four. Notice the cross brace is two by four inches uh, to cross braid it. The stakes uh, are two uh, by four, as you see there. And then the uh, guarding of the driven rod is 250.10. Now usually a butt ground on the pole today is usually not acceptable. A lot of your utilities look at a butt ground as a half a ground. So they want a driven rod and that driven rod should be down about six inches below the grade so that damage won't occur or take maybe a, a, a three inch, two inch uh, PVC, Schedule 80, cut it at an angle, drive it down over it, drill holes in the side of it so that uh, if water uh, fills in, it'll, it'll flow out. And then electricians can look down and uh, utilities can look at it. The authority having jurisdiction can look at it and know that the uh, number six uh, from that uh, panel board is... Uh, so, uh, connected well to the driven rod, but the code does allow for it to be six inches below there approximately. Now, you see the approved grinding electrode, you must review 250.52A5 that deals with driven rods, 250.53A that says it has to be at least eight foot in length and in the earth eight foot, and the electrician is making this installation in accordance with 250.53G. So uh, basically, uh, the, the permission to use that driven rod is in 250.52A5. The qualifications for that rod to be acceptable as a driven rod is 250.53A. The installation of the rod by the electrician is 250.53G as in grade. So those three sections would need to be reviewed. And if it's above grade, as shown there, then it has to be have a guarding procedure in accordance with 250.10. So uh, this illustration is illustrating a temporary pole uh, being installed for temporary service to a construction site, uh, excuse me, a construction site area, uh, and it would be in accordance naturally with Article 590.